These photographs, just a few years back, appeared on the sports pages of the world. They show Kathy Switzer trying to run in the Boston Marathon. When I wrote uh, Sports in America, Kathy, I interviewed some 300 uh, figures in the world of sport, asking them to evaluate what were the toughest sports events. And the most difficult one, they said, the most demanding, without question, was the marathon. You attained a good deal of prominence by being uh, the first woman to break into the Boston Marathon. What year was that? That was 1967, and it wasn't very long ago, but for that time in women's sports, it was practically the dark ages. We had gone to Boston uh, on a snowy, sleety morning, bundled up in sweat clothes and big hood in there. I suppose people could not tell I was a woman, and I had on the oldest clothes I owned because I was going to throw them off on the way to Boston. Four miles into the race, I began shedding these clothes, Four miles into the race also, the press truck went by and got very excited about the fact that a woman was in the race. And of course, we were handling it up, having a wonderful time with them. And they were saying, hey, where are you from, KZ Switzer? And uh, just at about that time, I heard some footsteps behind me that weren't the same cadence as the runner's footsteps. And just at that split second, someone grabbed me by the shoulder, spun me around, and tried to rip my numbers off just like that. Well, I jumped back and said, hey, and before I knew it, the whole Syracuse Harrier Club was trying to push this man away from me. I was just stunned. He was absolutely intent on getting those numbers off of me. And suddenly, like a bolt, I realized that this man was only furious at me because I was a woman in his race. Well, Jock is back trying to get the yeah. numbers, and before anyone could do anything, one of my teammates, who happened to be a 220-pound hammer thrower, came running full tilt and hit Jock with a body block. Jock went out of the race onto the curb on his rear end, and we took off down the street to Boston as fast as we could go. And the press got all of this on film because it happened right in front of the press truck. And in fact, you know, if that whole incident had not happened in front of the press truck, I often wonder if, in fact, it wouldn't have just been totally overlooked in the, the whole back old dark sports history. That was uh, Jock Semple, co-director of the marathon. Did he ever invite you back? After that, of course, they changed the, the entry blank for a while and said that women are not allowed to run in the Boston Marathon. We ran anyway. We ran unofficially. At that point, then, we got very adamant. We wanted to show the world we could do this. But in 1972, with the help of the Roadrunners Club of America and a, and a lot of people working very hard on changing the legislation, which, as you know, takes forever, yes. we changed the rules. And Jock, in fact, said to me in 1972, well, welcome to Boston. 